Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Ray and today I want to share with you a pet peeve of mine and what I think is one of the biggest scams, I don't know if that's the correct word, um, biggest secrets, biggest little dirty trick um, of pet food and that is all life stages. So if you have been following this channel for a while, you know that all life stages is not the way to go in your pet's food. Um, but that may be some new information to some of you guys where maybe this is your first video with me. So all life stages is a basically a legal definition. You will see this in the AFCO statement of a pet food. The AFCO statement is a legal definition that is set by the regulatory agency AFCO that um, is a label regulatory government agency that ensures that pet foods are following labeling rules. Um, it is very common that um, people will consider AFCO as maybe nutritional guidelines, but they're really not. They are label allowances, and so the government can make sure that pet food um, companies are not um, misleading people with label claims and things like that. They are not interested in nutrition. They do have um, ranges there, but those ranges are often very wide, and they're not based on um, optimal nutritional data. And so the AFCO statement will have terminology in there about what um, specific life stage a food is legally intended to feed. And so on that AFCO statement, you will see terms such as all life stages, you will see growth and maintenance, you will see adult maintenance. Those are the major, the major ones. You will also see um, sometimes verbiage that will refer to growth and growth of large size dogs, um, large size dog puppies, so puppies that are going to be um, 70 pounds or more as an adult, that's considered a large breed puppy. So sometimes you will also see that verbiage on an AFCO statement as well. So what all life stages means, because if what we just talked about, AFCO is a regulatory labeling commission, not a nutrition commission, um, Nutrition Commission, that is a good name. Where was Glenn when we were coming up with names for our channels? The Nutrition Commission. Anybody else out there wants that one, let me know. Um, they, are a, they are not a nutritional commission. Um, they will allow for all life stages. That means that the food simply needs to meet the needs of all the life stages. And what is the hardest life stage nutritionally to feed? That is a puppy or a kitten. That is a lactating or pregnant an animal because they need a lot, a lot, a lot of nutrition to be able to grow babies, to be able to feed babies, and they need a lot, a lot of nutrition to grow from a little tiny puppy or kitten up to that 100 pound, um, you know, doodle or lab or whatever you have in a year's time versus, you know, our sedentary adult dog that ideally should not be putting on excessive amounts of weight after a year or two old into the sunset of their life at hopefully 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, et cetera, years old. Those um, nutritional requirements are very different. And so pet food companies um, have started to market our, all life stages at a good thing. And they've done a very good job of convincing people that all life stage foods are um, are the best. The reason that they're saying is the best is our food is so good you can feed it to every life stage. Our food is so good you can feed it to a puppy. Our food is so good you can feed it to an adult. Um, what they're leaving out is it is um, so good that you can feed it to an, a puppy or an adult legally, not optimally. And so we'll flash up here um, the nutritional charts for optimal nutrition for each life stage. You will see that they are different. Um, and it is very difficult to be able to find a food that truly is optimal for every single life stage. But I have done that for you. And so even if you are of a mindset that you have found a food and um, that you really like and is an all life stage food because many of us in this nutrition nation and some of the other nutritional channels out there have found that if a food is an all life stage food we already almost know that it's not going to meet the cut now there are some that are but the vast majority of all life stage foods do not meet the cut in the end because it's just, you just can't statistically it's very difficult to do that However, if you have found one um, that you really like, I have, I have compiled this diagram that shows you 
the perfect, perfect, perfect all life stage food. So we may agree to disagree on many things. However, I think that I might be able to agree with you if you find an all life, all life stage food that falls into these parameters. So if you find an all life stage food that has protein between 22 and 23% and this is on a dry matter basis, fat between 10 and 12, fiber between two and five, calcium at 0.8% and phosphorus between 0.6 and 0.7, you may have found the most perfect all life stage food because those parameters are the parameters that fall into the ideal ranges from small animal clinical nutrition for puppy, large breed puppy, adult and senior dogs. And so there you go. Um, I like to make everyone happy. So I feel like I can make all my all life stage um, disbelievers happy. I think if you can find a food in these parameters, we can both agree that it is the perfect all life stage food. Otherwise, those pet food marketers are doing a really good job deceiving you and telling you that an all life stage food is the best food and that your puppy or um, your kitten can eat the same food their entire life because it's meant for all life stages. Just because you can feed it doesn't mean you should feed it and doesn't mean that it's optimal. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this explanation on why all life stage foods are not ideal and why you should really be feeding and choosing a food that is specific for your pet's life stage. So thank you for hanging out with me. I hope to hang out with you guys again real soon.